Welcome to FMA 0134. Uh, today, we would like to uh, learn about Chapter 6, Application of the Integration. In Mathematics 2, you learn about uh, the, surf, uh, the area of uh, under the curve and the volume after the curve been rotate 360 or 180 degree. Okay. Uh, doesn't matter is uh, either will be rotating towards uh, uh, x axis or y rotated towards y axis. Okay, so it depends on your the what it depends on what which one you are looking at. Okay, now over here we would like to learn is the length of a curve. Okay, so let's say you have the curve is here. Okay, your curve is here. Okay, so this is your curve. This is your curve. Okay, so now when this is your curve, what you need to do is, uh, will you because it is a curve, so you want to know what is the total length. Okay, so uh, if a straight line is very easy, so we can just use the theorem Pythagoras. But the thing is, this is a line. Okay, so when this is a line. Okay, so uh, it's a curved line, so it's, it's quite difficult for you to find the uh, exact one unless you use the approximation. Okay, then after that, then the next one we have, what we have over here is the... Okay, so what we have over here, okay, is like when you have this particular curve, okay, and then you try to rotate, okay, 360 towards, uh, let's say, x axis. When you rotate towards x axis, then you will have a 1 3D object. Okay, in the chap uh, mathematics 2, what you're going to have is, okay, uh, is the volume because it's a solid thing. Okay, but over here is this one. I I doesn't want it is the solid the three D, but I only want to know the surface or we say that the skin. Okay, the skin of it. So we want to know what is the the area of the skin or the surface of this object. Okay, so now, first let look at the real life application of our first thing is the arc length. So the the first thing is like um you know the distance. Okay, so you will know that what is the distance you uh, you would travel. And then the second one is just like the rocket being launched. Okay, so you also can know uh, how far the rocket being traveled. And then, okay, this is what we do, uh, what we did last time, I think during the primary school or the uh, play, play school. That is, you have a map, okay, you have a map uh, represent a road. Okay, so what you did was, okay, so uh, let's say you have a line in this way. So you use the trade, ataupun what we say that is the benang. Okay, so you are measuring from here to here by using that trade. Okay, then after that, you put on the ruler. Okay, so let's say you uh, you get two centimeters. So we look at the scale that one centimeter equals to one kilometer. So you use this thing to know that uh, this total length of this road actually is two kilometer. Okay. Then the second thing is over here is uh, we looking at is the surface area. Okay, so when we have the surface area, so we want to know the uh, total, total area of this outer layer of the object. And maybe some of you asking, is it important? Okay, for some manufacturer who are look uh, doing like the can, okay, the, the can is not the, the food inside, the can, because uh, they want to cut down the cost of producing a can or a box. That, so that's why they want to know the surface area. Okay, so the next one is the arc length. Okay, so now we we look at the first thing is the arc length. Okay, so if you have one, okay, so this is uh, the one in blue, okay, the one in blue is our uh, is our curve, okay, it's a C, is defined by the equation y equals to fx, okay, so this, this blue line actually is y equal to fx, where your f is continuous, okay, what is the meaning of continuous means is there is no uh, breaking on this uh, whole line and uh, you uh, over here we let our a x is in between a and b so this is our a this is our b so then we have a close uh, uh, length okay then after that uh, we can obtain a polygonal approximation to c by dividing the 
interval a b into x sub interval with endpoint and so on so means that when you have a blue curve okay then what we do is we cut them into stripe okay when we cut into stripes so how to choose this stripe actually it depends on how uh how hard working you are okay so when you are cutting the stripe uh, uh smaller okay when you cut think the stripe more smaller and then you will be having a better approximation to the uh yellow uh, sorry the blue line okay so if uh then it's lies and so on okay so then after that let us look at what I meant by if we want to cut into the uh, smaller line. Okay, if you have the original blue line, if you are not that hardworking, okay, so what you do is you just use uh, you just use a line joining P I minus one to P I, or the second one you cut uh, into two, then you cut into three, then you cut into four. So if you see the number four one have a better the red line have a better approximation compared to the first one that actually this is called the uh the the price you need to pay okay so because of uh why we are always straight line actually because straight line is easier that is we can use theorem by the grass okay so now after that the second one okay how you want to know the uh, uh how to find the uh, arc length derivation so as i say actually it's theorem by the girls so that's mean we are using square root okay so actually this one you have the what we have over here is uh, this is our y and over here this one is our value of x this is the value of our y okay this is value of our y this is value of our x so that's why you have an xi minus x uh, so that's why we have our xi minus xi minus one square that's mean is the total length of our x axis and then this is our total y axis and why they are using delta x actually delta x means is the difference between uh in x and then the delta y actually is the difference in the y and at the same time, okay, so after that, what they want to do, so they are factoring, okay, so over here, so delta x, okay, so how this one coming from, actually, this one actually is also using the uh, theorem Pythagoras, okay, actually not, sorry, this is not theorem Pythagoras, actually, this is differentiation, okay, so actually, this is, okay, why, how it coming from, actually, is when I have a dy dx, actually is about okay sorry okay so it's about uh delta y over delta x so if i want to know what is delta y so my delta x bring out so that's why you have your d f x y okay multiplied by your delta x okay then after that okay what is the next thing they want to do is because since this delta x okay and the delta x are the same delta x so so what they did is they factor out the delta x square okay so you balance out this one so and then uh since our uh square root and square so it will become delta x since our delta x is always greater than zero okay so if so that this is the formal definition of our arc length. If your f prime is continuous on a and b, then the length of uh, fx. Okay, now this formula is only for y equals to fx a in between eh, sorry x is in between a and b okay so when your function is defined in y equals to fx you are allowed to use this formula okay either you want to use f prime x or you want uh, we are more uh, familiar with the uh, dy dx so we use this one okay so how about then maybe you say that uh what if you have a curve defined in x equals to fy okay so no need to worry actually basically they are almost the same the difference only is like this now is no more uh because you when you have x equals to gy so we have our dx dy okay so that's why the place the exactly the same place is the place by dx dy okay so now let us look at the first example how to find the arc length okay so question you e, e find the length of the arc of the uh, semi cubic 
uh, parabola y squared equals to x cubed between 1, 2, and 4, 8. Okay, so this one is okay this one is optional you're not not necessarily you need to sketch this graph okay so what we are okay because this question is y squared equals to x cubed and one one and four eight is never said that is uh y equals to fx or fx equals uh x equals to y actually you can solve by two different ways okay so but since we are in the introduction uh part so we use uh y equals to fx so how you want to get y equals to fx so first thing we just use the y squared Okay, so this is the y squared equals to x cubed. So what you did is you just uh, move the power of 2. Okay, so what you do is you just move the power of 2 to the other side. So it will become x3 over 2. And then we look at our formula is uh, dy dx. So what you do, you just did the normal differentiation, push the 3 over 2 to the in front. And then 3 over 2 minus 1 is three, uh, 1 over 2. And then next thing is you just substitute into the formula. The place of the dy dx is going to be replaced by 9 over 4 x dx so what you do is you substitute okay so because this one is okay uh if someone who is good in a uh, u substitution that is you no need to replace by one plus nine over four x you can directly uh, integrate but the thing is uh, since we are not that good now, so what we do is we just use the substitution u equals to one plus nine over four x. So we finding our du nine over four dx. So and as usual, this is the uh okay. So since we are in the form of a definite integral, so what you need to do, you need to change the limit from x equals to 1 to for the u how to find this one actually just substitute x into uh, x equals to 1 here so you will have u equals to 1 plus 9 over 4 actually is 13 over 4 and then you substitute 4 you will get 10 so now what you did is uh, you're going to integrate from uh, 13 over 4 until 10 for set u what is the set u set u is u3 over 2 Okay, sorry, set u actually, set u actually is, uh, set u actually is u 1 power of 2. So then you have a plus 1 divided by 2 over 3. So after that, you substitute, you will get the final answer. Okay, do you need necessary to press the calculator and give one value? Uh, for the time being, please don't do so because, uh, we don't want to lose the significance figure so keep your answer in the form of cert so it doesn't matter let us look at the second example okay which uh, we are involving uh, the function uh, defined by x equals to ft okay or we can say it's an x equals eh, sorry uh, uh, this one actually is uh, x equals to gy, okay, uh, contrary with another one is uh, y equals to uh, fx, okay, and then your uh, limit is from uh, y from c to d, and as uh, usual, our uh, function gy must be, uh, after differentiate, is a continuous, so we just uh, interchanging the rows of f and y, so that's why we just have our uh, arc length actually is the integral from c to d and then we have one plus dx dy square uh, dy okay so but, uh, we look at the second example so let your gy equals to 2 over 3 y minus 1 3 over 2 calculate the arc length of the graph over the interval 1 to 4 okay so now uh, as you see that this uh, red color uh, uh, formula what we just substitute inside uh, the interval actually is from 1 to 4 the limit is 1 to 4 and then we put into a square root 1 plus g prime y square so what you need actually is only the g prime y so we have our g y is 2 over 3 y minus 1 <coughs> 3 over 2 excuse me and then so as usual we just push our uh, power in front and then minus 1 so then we have a 1 over 2 since after we push 3 over 2 so we can cancel off so we have y minus 1 uh, power of 1 so we take this one 
Okay, substitute into our g prime y square. So we have our uh, square root 1 plus y minus 1 square uh, half and then power of 2. And then these two are neutralized. So you have a 1 plus y minus 1. And then this one cancel off. You have set y as uh, always we change our y actually to we become 1, y 1 over 2. So uh, when we integral, so means that is a plus one divided by three over two. But when you flip is two over three, y three over two. So what you need to do, you just substitute the value four inside here. So you have a two over three, four, three over two minus one three over two and then you press your calculator and then you get this answer okay so the next one we see uh, our arc length in uh, our curve defined in a parametric okay in the parametric means that is your x is defined in the third variable okay is in ft or and you can be in theta and so on and then our y is defined in another function but also in the same alphabet okay so either is t theta and so on and your t is defined by uh, p until q so the formula is a little bit different so it's only the ds dt square plus dy dt square so actually Okay, actually, upper length or even the surface area actually is a lot easier compared to what we have uh, for the area and the uh, volume because uh, arc length surface area basically we no need to sketch we just use the formula and then we just substitute into the formula okay so let's us look at the e3 question compute the length of the curve x equals to 2 cos uh, power of 2 theta y equals to 2 cos theta sine theta where your theta is from uh, defined by 0 to pi so we look at the formula what we have okay the first thing we plug in our limit 0 to pi and then we need dx over the d data and dy over d data so you just differentiate at some place uh okay if you want to write below it also can basically i will just cut it into uh, my paper into two sides so on the left hand side or the right hand side i just put my x equals to two cos power of two theta so we differentiate so push uh, actually this is a power two so push in front so you have a four okay then minus one actually is cos theta differentiate cos theta actually is negative sign so you have uh, after uh, after Okay, after that, they change it to be because uh, because later on I need to integrate. So I use the definition of 2 cos theta sine theta actually is the sine 2 theta. So that's why I have a negative 2 sine 2 theta. And then after that, y equals to 2 cos theta sine theta. So actually 2 cos theta sine theta actually is sine to theta so i differentiate uh dy d theta sorry actually this one should be dy d theta h equals to two cos two theta okay so <clears throat> means that you differentiate sine actually is cos two theta differentiate the one inside is two by using the chain rule so what is your next thing you need to do just substitute inside ds d theta and dy d theta okay if you notice that some maybe say that uh, this is not dx d theta, but the thing is because since this is a plus, so it, they are in the interchangeable. Actually, I know this one actually is dy d theta square. This one is dx d theta square. Okay, so excuse me. So after that, uh, you need to expand first. Okay, so after expand, then you factor out the four. So you have a cos root two theta plus sine squared two theta. Actually, this is one is using sine uh, squared theta plus cos squared theta equals to one. So this one, the whole thing change it to become one. Okay, so you become one. Then after that, you have a third four. Third four actually is two. So you integrate zero to pi for two, and then two you put the theta. Then you substitute pi and zero. So it's equals to two pi. Okay, so now basically this type of question. Okay, so let us look at the next question. Find the exact arc length of the given curve of the given interval. Okay, first thing, we only have a three different formula. The first one is uh, you need to find dy dx. Then the second one is you finding the dx over d 
dy. Then the third one is dx dt, dy dt. And then this one, the third one is the easiest to find because you must have your x and y defined in, uh, in the parametric form. So this one, unless the question is given in a parametric, so that if not, then you're not going to use this one. So you only have these two. Okay, so look at this question. Find the exact arc length uh, of the given curve on the given interval. Okay, they, so they didn't say, okay, but this question is quite good. They say it's from y to 2, sorry, y equals to 2 to y equals to 4. So roughly you can knowing that is when y is provided, so means that they expect you to integrate uh, using the y formula. So means that is you are trying to write your x in the terms of fy. Okay, so if the limit they're giving you is y, y, Okay, the, sorry, the limit they're giving you, you is x, so you try to write y equals to fx. Okay, this one's not necessary, it's true. So, so then maybe you say that how you want to know that either you use x or equals to uh, or y. Okay, so we back to looking our main uh, formula. You have a 24 xy equals to y4 plus 48. Okay, your duty is either change your x is in the form of y or the y in form of the x. For this question, particular question, it is easier to write x in the terms of y. So it means that I have 24xy equals to y4 plus 48. So my x actually is y4 plus 48 divided by y. Okay, so I can totally re, uh, write my function of x in the terms of y. But contrary to the opposite side, you have a 24xy equals to y4 plus 48. So if you shifted your y to this side, okay, if you shifted this one to this side, so you say 24x equals to y4 plus 48y. Okay, sorry, uh, because it's divided is per y. But how you want to make your y is in terms of x. Actually, it is not possible, okay? Because you have, uh, this is uh, going to be y3. This is 48 over y. It is, uh, it is impossible to write your y solely in the terms of x. Maybe you say that you can use uh, uh, implicit differentiation, but the thing is, you are not... Uh, later on, after you use implicit differentiation, when you want to substitute into your equation, then you will be having facing the problem. Okay, so uh, this one, uh, how to totally uh, find, then we will do it in the class. Okay, and then now we look at the surface area. So the surface area over here is basically just like uh, we our arc length, but the thing is you need to revolve uh, by, so they are doing the same thing is they cut into the stripe one by one. Okay, so now they also uh, using the same approach as the arc length. Okay, but the thing is now we are involving another one is called delta x. Okay, so this is basically, this is how it look like. Okay, so now, one thing that is because of if you look at this one okay if you have this one particular curve okay if you have this one particular if you rotate towards x axis you get a vast okay but the thing is if you rotated okay if you rotated towards y okay so you will have this shape okay you're going to have this shape so the, the shape of these two objects are not the same. So when the objects are not the same, so your surface area will never be the same. Okay, so when the question of surface area, please open your eyes and look for which uh, area your uh, function is rotating to. 
okay because the question must consist of where you are revolving to or rotating to okay just like your volume okay your volume you must look at the question either is going to rotate towards y or x because the object after revolution they are not the same side uh, not the same object okay when the object not the same exactly the same so your volume will be different so so happen to the surface area will be totally different also okay so over here we just look at the formula okay so because of okay because of there will be a little bit difference okay between the formula okay so please look carefully for the if you want to refer to the books okay or not necessarily our module you can revert because now internet have a lot of uh, formula so please make sure you look at the formula carefully okay so the first one is surface area for revolution about x axis so when revolution about x axis so your function is fx okay and if your revolution towards y so your function will be gy okay it's continuous and differentiable at this one and then this is the formula if you look at these two formula okay the thing over here first thing they have a two pi okay i, I always uh, call it as a two pi actually it's the, our squirrel we have a two pi and then the limit is for the x axis a to b and this one is an x okay don't argue actually this is an x this is an y okay because you are rotating towards x so this is an x and this one is dy dx this is dx dy square okay then if you are uh, notice it actually this part okay actually this part this part is your arc length so actually correct because our arc length okay multiplied with the v and then we rotate we integrate we have a 3d because okay so this is how you can get the surface area okay actually this one is your arc length formula so if you okay so now okay then how about okay then actually have one more slide that is clearly can uh, showing you the different formula okay then if your question is different uh, is defined by the uh, uh, parametric so if you see here actually this one is yt this one is xt okay when you have an x as is this one is y v okay if you okay this one actually is y as is is xt okay so now let us look at the general formula okay this general formula are not inside your module okay i took it from others uh, textbook okay so in this uh, formula okay in this general formula okay you no need to care about uh, too much either it is uh, rotating to where okay so now we have a uh, three different uh, category here if the question provided you y equals to fx then you will fall into the first category Category. and then the second one is they provided you ux equals to gy then this is the second category and then the third, third one is the easiest is the parametric okay so and then now we uh, for the a b over here okay the a b over here is depends on if you are uh, provided by fx so you took the a b for the value of uh, x if for the y you took the value of the uh, defined for the y and then for the t is the defined from the a to b okay now as i said that is because of when our uh, function okay or our function or our arc is uh, rotating towards x axis and y axis you're going to produce different types of uh, different types of shape so what we need to uh, look at here is okay so regardless okay regardless whatever function you provided when you want to rotating to x axis okay so when you want to rotating to x axis what you will have is this is the, your r okay your r here is always is y when you want to rotate to x axis it is always y when you want to rotate to the y axis it is always 
x okay and then how you're going to use this x or this y okay since this y is in the function of fx so you replace your y with fx if this one is the x so you replace okay so then when maybe you ask when i'm going to replace when i'm not going to replace actually it's quite easy because when you want to do integration you cannot have y and x at uh, exist at the same time everything you need to change it to x or everything you need to change it to into y okay so and for this one why i love this formula very much the main reason is i only need to take care of my y and my x and my ds is always the same because arc length will be always the same regardless whether i rotate it rotating towards y axis or the x axis okay now and then, then maybe you will ask, okay, so uh, why uh, why in the books have a different formula? Okay, because certain times, okay, uh, if you use wrongly, okay, the arc length, okay, I, I talk about, about our arc length. If an arc length, if you choose wrongly, okay, means if you choose wrongly the formula, it's not saying that you will get different arc length. But the only thing sometimes, the integration is uh, become quite difficult for you to integrate. Okay, besides that is nothing else. Okay, so now we look at the first uh, example here. When they give you y equals to, fx okay this is y equals to fx and this is x equals to negative one to one okay in the book they're going to use different formula for us it's very simple we stick to the same thing okay this is they provide you fx what i need to do is if they say it's rotating to y is this okay so i'm going to have my two pi my r will become x and then dx is just put this one on the uh, b at the end. So you're going to have integrate negative 1, 1, 2 pi. Okay, sorry, this one should be, okay, this one, it should be x because they want to rotate towards y as is. Okay, they want to, hey, sorry, they want to rotate towards x as is. So when the x as is means that, means that if x exists means this is y so you put this one is y over here square root one plus dy dx square dx and then this is negative one to one so you put here so what you do that's what this is what i meant here if you keep your y without changing to become cert four minus x square this one is a y how you going to integrate you cannot integrate when you have a y and x at the same time so i change my y to become third four minus x square and this one dy dx i calculate it outside so dy dx is this one okay so y equals to four minus x square half okay this is half so i push half in front four minus x square minus half minus 2x okay because you need to use the chain rule and if you want <coughs> because this one is a square so what i do is i square the whole answer so i will have a x square over 4 minus x square so 1 plus and after that then you look at the second row then you it seems like very complicated yeah because this one is not in a proper fraction so when you uh cross multiply and then you this one and then my these two can cancel my two bring in front so i have a four pi integrate one then you substitute the value is eight pi okay now the second question over here is the arc the arc of the parabola y equals to x square okay this question also provided you y equals to fx and from 1 1 to 2 4 is rotating about the y axis okay so if you how do you use this formula y as is so and they provide the u fx still using the a and b still using the x okay a and b still using the x and this r is changing to become x then the rest of it is still like rotating to the x as is only the only thing here is x so what we need to do is we are integrating two pi x okay 2 pi x but because why is 2 pi x because we are rotating to 
y as is. Okay, now, since my formula is provided in fx, so I take 1 to 2, 1 to 2, 2 pi, this one I keep an x, square root, 1 plus dy dx, so this one you find, okay, so you have y equals to x square, so dy dx actually is 2x, so if I square it, so I have a 4x square square root 1 plus 4x square. Okay, this one, how to going to how are you going to integrate? So just use the substitution u equals to 1 plus 4x square. Why? How do you know that you're using 4, 1 plus 4x square? Because outside there is an x, so normally it's a substitution. So when I use the du, it's at x dx. So then we change the limit. So we ch how to change the limit? So when x equals to 1, your u actually is 1 plus 4, so it's 5. When x equals to 2, so your u is 1 plus 16, so it's 17. So integrate set u, so you have a u3 over 2, substitute 17 and 5, so you have this answer. Okay, maybe some of you are not satisfied with this formula. You said that you still want to use the formula for from your book okay so doesn't matter so from the uh, if you want to follow the formula from the book what you need to be aware is okay the formula are already different because when you are doing for y as is so you still following integrate a but since it's y so you use one four okay you use one four and then definitely our two pi is there Okay, now it's still following dx, x square root, 1 plus dx dy square. So you need to change your question to become x equals to set y. And then maybe some of you will ask, how I might know that it's a positive, not negative? Because from 1 to 2 is this one. So when this one, so actually is a set y, okay, unless it's on this side, so it's a negative set y, okay, so you have 1 over 4, you replace your x to become set y, and then this one, you need to find dx, dy, so you have 1 over 2y, and then you do your uh, multiplication, okay, the answer will be the same. Okay, okay, now let us look at another one example. This one is the one using the parametric. Okay, so parametric uh, is quite, uh, they don't have, uh, find the surface area by rotating the following curve. Okay, and the question saying that x as is, recall when x as is, this must be y. Okay, so since parametric don't have the issue of the limit, so, and then this one is always the same, so you just need to substitute your y to become y, find uh, t, then uh, x prime t, y prime t, you can find beforehand, then uh, you do the simplification, then you integrate. Okay, so let us look at another one. Okay, so this one is y as is. Rotating towards y as is, then this one is x. Okay, so x from where x is from here. Okay, then you need to change here uh, because it is impossible have an x here, then the rest is t. But I know that some of you that is you still can integrate, you just pull your x outside. No, okay. So when we do integration, everything must be in the same alphabet. If you is a t, everyone must be t. If if an x is everyone must be in the x. Okay, then now if we look at this example, find the area of a surface by revolving y using for the x as is. So what we need to do is always taking 0 to 2, then is 2 pi. y as is, this one is always must be y, then square root 1 plus dy dx square. Why I use dy dx? Because they use, they giving me is y, okay, so, and then everything is then, uh, what is, this y must replace by set x, okay, and 
now the same question actually is almost the same question but when the question said rotating to y okay you have two different choice either you want to follow the book or follow my uh the notes over here that is we still using the x zero to set two after that this is 2 pi. Y as this, remember, this is x. Square root 1 plus, because it's provided this one, so it's dy dx square. Then it is dx. Okay, so although it is y as this, but the thing is we are following what the formula provided to us. And uh, in the class, you can see that is if you use both ways also, you will get the same answer. Okay, so basically, um, your chapter 6 is finished. The rest of the uh, exercise, we will do it during the class.